Y'all ain't never heard of knocking for you, Henry. Well, I, actually, we had an invitation, didn't we? Yeah, how did you know? Yeah, yeah, it came in the shape of a bottle. We're from the Kingsman Tailor's Shop in London. Maybe you've heard of us. Oh, the Kingsman? Yeah. Huh. That's where y'all got them fine suits and them fancy spectacles y'all got on. Exactly. That's right. Y'all look damn sharp. Let me see if I got it right here. You want me to believe that it's normal for a tailor to hack through an advanced biometric security system with nothing but a little bit of your watch on? I can promise you. That dog don't hunt. So why don't you go on and get down on your knees and tell me who you really work for? Welcome to Kermit Uncut. Kingsman, The Golden Circle, is in UK cinemas now. I'll be reviewing it on the Radio 5 Live film show I do with Simon Mayo. But it gives me an opportunity to talk about Jane Goldman, the screenwriter. Some time ago, people were saying, you know, the thing is that film critics never pay proper attention to screenwriters. They don't give script writers the credit that they deserve. And I have tried to address that. And I'm a big fan of Jane Goldman, so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to give you my Jane Goldman top five screenplays. Uh. <laughs> You're amazing. Really? So, at number five, X-Men First Class. Now, this obviously is a big franchise superhero blockbuster. There are six credited writers on the film. In fact, Jane Goldman's got credits on two X-Men films, this and Days of Future Past. What I like about it is that it does have personality, it does have quirk, it does have charm. And you get the sense that although it is an ongoing franchise, she's managed to get something in there that is absolutely personal. Also, she's working with Matthew Vaughan, her longtime collaborator, which brings me perfectly to number four. Whole of Stormhold. Um, my kingdom? Maybe. Look up. <laughs> so at number four, Stardust, directed by Matthew Vaughan and adapted from the source by Neil Gaiman. I really like Stardust. When I first saw it, I thought it was charming and funny and inventive, but here's the really strange thing. Stardust came into our house on DVD, and it was one of those films I saw, I thought, this is, you know, pretty good, it's very, very likeable, and I do like the script, I like how playful it is. And then it was one of those DVDs that just sat by the DVD machine and kept getting played over and over and over again. Believe me, I've seen Stardust more times than is entirely healthy. Which brings us to number three, and a film which has the rare honour of being described as too scary for its audience, The Woman in Black. Now, I love the source novel for The Woman in Black. I love Susan Hill's novel, which is obviously very, very influenced by Shirley Jackson and The Haunting of Hill House. When The Woman in Black came out, poor old Daniel Radcliffe had to do loads of press saying, look, this is not just a Harry Potter film. This is much more scary. It's got a 12 certificate, but really, you know, I mean, I wouldn't take kids to see it. It's really creepy. The BBFC had actually asked it to be reined in slightly, to tone down some of the, the loud noises, some of the scarier scenes to make them less intense. Had, didn't work at all. People who saw it were completely terrified by it. That, for me, is a success. And I think one of the reasons that it works is because it has a really smart script. You can tell that Jane Goldman loves the source. You can tell that it's made by people who are enthusiastic about the genre. And it's always a great thing when somebody says to you, well, well, what's that film like? It's a horror film. What's it like? And the answer is, well, it's too scary. Who was he? Who would be his next victim? The golem had last struck the day before her arrest. And his was the name on every Londoner's lip. So on to number two, and a film which is out in cinemas at the moment, The Limehouse Golem. I'm a really big fan of this movie, although I have to say it is struggling to find the audiences it deserves. It's very smartly adapted from a novel by Peter Ackroyd, which is frankly unfilmable. What Jane Goldman has managed to do is to focus in on two central characters who were in the novel, but she's really sort of changed the role they play, and also found a way of dramatising the fact that the novel is a series of written accounts, a series of letters, a series of diary entries. 
I think the film works really well. I've seen it a couple of times now. I think it's very well directed and there's terrific performances, not least by Bill Nye, Eddie Mars and, and Danny Mays, who are three of my favourite actors. But at the heart of it is a really smart script, which is about something. Is it it is about it gender. It's about it's class. Bad. It's about time and place and setting. And it's about the difference between theatre and real life and what it is that we like about being scared. You don't need a power to be a superhero. Leave him alone! It's none of your business! Yes, it is. Hey, there's a dude just like a superhero out there fighting a bunch of guys. Who are you? I'm Kick-Ass. Which brings me to the number one spot and my favourite Jane Goldman script. Again, it's a collaboration with Matthew Vaughan, adapted from a comic strip by Mark Miller and John Romita. It is, of course, Kick-Ass. I remember seeing Kick-Ass for the first time. A friend of mine, a colleague, had been to see it and said, you just won't believe the stuff that goes on in Kick-Ass. In fact, they compared it to the experience of seeing Clockwork Orange in terms of just sheer jaw-dropping audacity. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was anarchic and surprising, and it seemed to be genuinely out of control in a very, very controlled way. It was funny, and it was edgy, and it was punchy in a way that so many comic strip adaptations just aren't. Also, it really annoyed the Daily Mail, which is always cause for rejoicing. Oh, yeah. So there we are. That's my Jane Goldman top five screenwriting credits. Now, obviously, there's stuff that I've missed out. I mean, she worked with Tim Burton on the Miss Peregrine adaptation. And there's The Deck, which is a very, very different movie. But for me, Kick-Ass is absolutely the standout. What about you? What are your favourites? Let me know.